feel the walls start closing in. Welcome back, everybody. It is the PM Show with Larry and Nancy Minetti. And we're talking right now to Peter M. Lenkov on the line. And Larry, of course, I mean, we're all super excited here. Yeah, but Peter, all the girls are going nuts over your picture. He's, they said you should be a movie star. Well, he's very handsome. Peter, Peter how did, did you wind up being so handsome and being in a writer's room? <laughs> is he there? Yeah. I'm here. You don't know what to say? No, I'm saying it's all Photoshop. <laughs> sure. Peter, were you ever a, an actor? No. No. You never wanted to no, be. No, God forbid. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I don't blame you. <laughs> you know, actors are all nuts anyway. Yeah, well, I got to compete with guys like Larry Minetti. Uh, no contest. I, uh, yeah, but I, I admit that I'm nuts. <laughs> you know. Um, no, nah, I always wanted to be a writer. I, uh, I you know, we're... Uh, a guy like me needs to stay behind the camera. So, but I appreciate the compliment. How, how <laughs> many how many writers do you have? You know, folks. You know, eleven million people I think or approximately are listening. So, you know, they don't know that uh, Paramount Studios is the studio that does Hawaii Five O. And I've been up in Peter's office, and it's quite a, a megilla. And there, I think there's seven. Is there seven or eight writers? We have like uh, I have a staff of about actually about nine writers. Uh, wow. Some of them are producers, some of them are writers. But you know everybody writes on the show, and it's it's a team sport. Um, and uh, look, we do 24 episodes a season, so uh, you got to have a lot of hands in there. How long does it take you um, from what, the beginning of a script to getting it, um, getting a director, and start filming? Well, usually for uh, every episode, I mean, we start we start shooting in July uh, every year, but the writers come in the first week of June, so we start writing scripts then. Sometimes we, at the end of the season before, we'll start breaking stories for the next season, but normally when we're in production, it's eight days to prep an episode and then eight days to shoot an episode. Oh, wow. I see. Wow. wow. That's a busy schedule. And, and you guys have phenomenal guest stars. I mean, Jimmy Kahn. Jimmy Buffett. I mean, I can't remember everybody. Steve, who was that? You got the Jimmys down. We just had Terrence yeah. Howard on the show, who's wow. amazing, Academy Award nominee. And wow. Ed Asner's done a couple oh, yeah. episodes. Oh, he's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we get good. We get, we're very, Christine Lottie's on the show now. Oh, I love her. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we're very lucky. And I, I, I like to think it's the writing, but I think going to Hawaii has something to do with it oh, as well. I'm sure of it, yeah. Hey, now, Peter, I mean, you know, there's a lot of young writers out there, a lot of people that want to do what you're doing. How did that road happen for you? You know, you're a young guy, you're 12 years old, you're writing plays. Kind of, kind of tell us how the story in led Canada, to being a... Canada, on top yeah. of it. How did you, yeah. who, how did you, how did you break you in? get discovered? Well, I, you know, I, I, I tell, I, I try to tell people this story, and, and I, I, you know, most people, like, have a relative or somebody they know that helped them get in the business. I... I, my mother was a big fan of the National Enquirer, so I, I learned a lot about <laughs> about the entertainment business through that uh, that magazine. And, and uh, but I uh, I just you know I, I always wrote, and I and I feel like I I, I started writing. I, I took a when I went to college, I actually dropped out of. Uh, I was started to go into law school, and I, I ended up not being happy with that because I felt I was spending more time writing and drawing cartoons and. Then I was doing studying, and, I, and so I went into film school, and ultimately a good friend of mine suggested I come out to L.A. He said, this is, if you're going to write, this is the place to be. And I came out, and I, and I, I ended up taking a job as, a, uh, uh, as a, uh, basically an assistant to a producer. Um, and in the mornings and late at night, while I wasn't working, I'd be writing scripts, and I wrote about seven spec movie scripts and tried to get people to read them and that was very tough and but ultimately i wrote one that uh again like i i, I would send them to the same people over and over again and they'd say thank you but no thank you and no. i finally wrote one and and it was called demolition man and uh, i got people to read it and people really responded positively and and uh, that got bought by warner brothers and and that really was my big break um mm. So and I was very young, and, I, and I, I just wrote it out of, you know, like everything. I was writing things completely broke, uh, taking the bus around L.A., and, um, and I just, you know, after a while, I think you, you get better with every script. So I felt like I was at a point where after seven or eight scripts, I felt like it, it definitely uh, was the best thing I had done at the time, and, um, uh, and I sold it. I just, that was my break, and, and I got lucky enough 
to to con, you know work and pretty consistently since then. Well, you know, it's it's kind of funny, uh, Peter, because of course, Demolition Man. Now, I, I would say it's kind of a cult classic. Yeah, now. definitely. Yeah, great, absolutely. Great and when I was when I was younger and I saw Demolition Man, I really saw there was a lot of comic book elements that came across in that as well. So I mean, you definitely kind of you have this heritage there with this movie. Yeah, for sure. It's. Uh, you know, it's funny. It didn't start off that way. I, I was so broke. I, I used to keep a, uh, a boom box in the back of my car. I didn't have a radio in the car, so I would, I would put a boom box in the back seat of the car, and I'd put a cassette in there, and, and a friend of mine had lent me a, a Sting cassette, and there was a song on there called Demolition Man, but the boom box was broken, so I kept playing the same song over and over again. <laughs> so I would listen to that song driving to work, every day and it huh? took me about an hour to drive to work so i'd hear that song 50 times and finally i just broke down and i said you know i got i, I who the hell is the demolition man because i kept saying don't mess around with the demolition man i kept thinking who is this guy and i just wrote the script sort of based on you know hearing that lyric over and over again in my head that's i don't i don't think that people that are listening realize the dark dark moments that you went through that writers go through and actors and directors go through that want to give it up and and have those nights that you can't sleep it's it's just horrible and when they say that you go in with a, a donut and you ask for a glass of water and some ketchup to mix <laughs> that's not a joke i mean no. and and god bless you i mean you had the uh tenacity of a bulldog and you, i think you need to be a, a real real champion and a fighter to make it and and to be as as great as you are and congratulations. Well, I also well, I also think it's the love of it. You've really got to love it. I I think you're right. I yeah. think I think you know it's I I think part of it is talent. That's definitely there. Yeah. But I I think for me, it, I really like took stock and said it's the only thing I can do. Yeah. I, I couldn't do anything else. Right. Right. Well, it's deep in your soul. That's that's where it comes from. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Peter, I really appreciate you taking the time. Of course, uh, Larry was so thrilled when we finally got booked you on the show. He, he came into my office. He was giddy like a schoolboy. <laughs> Unbelievable. You got to come That's back, so Peter. Kind. You got to come back. Anytime, guys. Peter, absolutely. thank you so much. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. And Thanks have a great holiday. All right. Peter M. Lenkov, guys. Be sure to keep, keep an eye out. RIPD, rest in peace department. Coming up in 2013, Jeff Bridges, Ryan Reynolds, and Kevin Bacon going to steal this one. We'll have to have them back gonna, just before that. We're Absolutely. Have to review yeah. it next year. Coming up next, yeah. we'll link in your link to the movies. We'll be back right Yay. after this. Yay. Yay. This is Larry Minetti. It's summertime now, folks. So if you want to go out and play golf or go swimming and you're depressed because of skin disorders, well, I've got the answer. It's called Herpanison. It cleans your skin from the inside out. 